you, you hit on a uh, on a good notion. What I call it is validation. It's sort of like they want to be validated for feeling like shit. Oh, right? no. <laughs> I mean, they, they, Today, the topic that we are going to talk about, okay, is about uh, why do people are so resistant to the positive uh, things that's going to happen in their life when they, when, when they know that change is the thing that they have to do, you know, because change right. is, mm, go ahead, please. Yeah, it, it's interesting that you asked that question. Why are people so resistant? And I think what it is, Jane, it's not so much the change. Um, it's the the familiarity with the past or what they're already doing. Familiar you see, it's, it's sort of tough. It's sort of tough. For example, um, like when you go into an ice cream store, right? And let's say, for example, that you love strawberry and uh, oh, white I love chocolate. chocolate chips. <laughs> right? okay. And then someone says to you, you, you know how they do that at, at the ice cream parlors where they say, you want to have a taste. And you say, OK, well, you might taste it. But chances are you're not going to change, at least not right away, because it's not familiar. The taste is not familiar. If it had a, an odor, it's not familiar. And so we resist what we don't know. We don't necessarily resist what is new. We hang on to what we're familiar with, familiar right? with. because it feels comfortable. Whatever we feel comfortable with is what we attach ourselves to, because no matter what kind of change we do, there's that, that, that little bit of discomfort until you feel comfortable with it. And so that's what people resist. They resist actually just leaping in and trying a different ice cream and letting it set in for a bit of time. That's one of the biggest things that I've discovered when I'm dealing with people. Mm. Um, AKA and, your and clients, reason, uh, may I assume? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jane. Mm. And for example, you and I were working together this first time. And it's a it's a bit uncomfortable for me because I've never done it like this before. I'm usually listening to and responding to questions from my clients. But on the mm. other hand, what you're doing is now you're asking me a question and I have to give you information based on your questions. But it takes some time. Now, Here's the thing that I find from clients that are really kind of stupid sometimes. Yes, please. They, they, I was about they, to ask you that. <laughs> Let's they go. They stick with comfort and then they complain. And so if you stick with what you're comfortable with and you're complaining about what you're doing, I mean, by all right, you should say, well, you know, idiot, wake up. But some of them don't because they're so stuck into that. And so they're not even looking forward, Jane. Mm. They're constantly in that. And they may even feel good about mm. feeling depressed or stressed out or, you know, just having a shitty life. And that's not the way to do it. You've got to you got to just forget about everything that you're familiar with. OK, jump in and try. Because here's the thing. If you don't like it, you can always make another choice. Right. Exactly. But people sometimes they just don't have the courage to do it. Yeah. OK, so. I have to ask you this question. So are you saying that you have clients without uh, divulging any of their confidential information, of course, mm -hmm. they actually come and complain to you that they are complain and sort of kind of uh, trying to get approval from you that, you know what, my this depressing life, I'm very comfortable with it. I, I would love, in, in, in other words, they're trying to twist and turn and make sentences sound really smart to try to get approval from you, Bill Calhoun, the life coach, is it somewhere along that line, you feel? It, it, it's, it's, a good, it's a good spot, Jane. They, I, don't think, I don't think they deliberately do that, but that's, sometimes that's what happens. And um, you, you hit on a, uh, on a good notion. What I call it is validation. It's sort of like they want to be validated for feeling like shit, oh, right? No. <laughs> I, mean, they, yeah, I mean, seriously, but they just, hey, you know what? It, even though they're not doing it, but the bubble up above their head is saying, I need Bill Calhoun to tell me I'm okay being, you know, being shitty where I'm at. <laughs> right. Don't want to change. I just want him to validate it. Sometimes that happens. Mm. And I think, you know, and I, th here's the thing though, Jane, I don't blame them mm -hmm. because they don't know. No one around them is actually helping them get any place. They're not, they're not actually pointing it out. And so immediately what I'll do in, in a, in a word, I'll say, look, you're bullshitting yourself. Mm -mm -mm. You're basically just, um, you want help but you're not willing to listen. And this mm. happens a lot when I'm in mm. the United States right? or when I have a, American clients because American clients feel like they know everything already. And so American then I ask son. them, I say, so, 
Yeah, so why do you need me? Well, to be why fair have- to all uh, other internationality and ethnicity, all right, it, not just American. Uh, I can Correct. speak of all races and everyone, all rather including myself. I'm someone yes. who is pretty resistant to change. Like for example, okay, um, because as you know, I'm someone with who just started out on YouTube. My resources is really limited to work with. Hence, uh, this, you know, when we, when someone, okay, you are a man, I believe uh, you can relate. How would you feel if you are someone who has very little resources to work with, aka mm-hmm. the topic of money? You will feel like uh, your confidence is, is uh, uh, minus by 50%. Um, you don't have that much of a confidence. You're very careful with everything you're trying to decide to work on. Like you're, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I have this amount of uh, resources left maybe for three months or a month. Would you, would you make a long-term decision to go into a long-term project knowing that you only have like three months of resources left? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, I do know what you mean. It's interesting, Jane, because we're still talking about change, aren't we? Yes. We are. are you? That's and so what you what you've just illustrated is exactly my point. In other words, would you go into your question? Um, essentially, is would you go into another project if you were limited on resources? Mm. Where my notion would be different. Mm-hmm. My notion would be because I have limited resources. How creative can I be mm-hmm. with using the limited resources that I have to achieve the same? outcome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you see you see the difference? Because if you're actually preventing yourself from doing something because mm-hmm. you lack something, mm-hmm. then you're never going to get there. And that's the point. You're not mm-hmm. you're not you're not um embracing change. Mm-hmm. What you're doing is you're staying stuck with what you're familiar with. For mm-hmm. example, resources. Let's say for example you have a dollar. Mm. And uh well, let's say for example you have a hundred dollars, mm. right? With a hundred dollars you can do A B C. Well, now you only have $50. So what you're saying to yourself is, you know what? Um, I'm not going to be able to do A and B. I can do C, but I'm not going to be able to do A and B mm. because I only have $50. Mm. Well, that's exactly what I reach with my clients. Okay. They're working with limitations, but limitations. these limitations are self-perceived. Self-perceived this is ex- limitation. Yeah. These are external, Jane. That means that you're allowing external things or, or other people dictate what you do instead of pulling out from inside and going, what can I do to create a different environment, right? Mm. Because you can't change the fact that you have $50, right? Mm. But you can change how you use that $50, you Mm. see? And so what I would tell people is anything is possible with any resource. Mm. And that's like my signs back here, but you have to think big. Mm. You can't think limited, Mm. case in point. I have a client just recently that says, you know what, Bill, Um, I've got a job. I'm only making X amount of money. So what I want to do is, you know, I'm going to have to save more money. So therefore, that's the way I've got to go about doing it. And I said, well, have you ever, you know, examined the notion of instead of saving more money, what can you do to creatively make more money? You see, because people think, okay, the more I save, the more I'll have for the future. Instead of thinking, okay, what can I do to create more wealth? And so therefore I can have these things and I don't have to worry about saving because if you save $100 every month, that's all you got, Jane. You only got $100 at the end of the, at the, end of the year, you have $1,200. Mm. However, what if you were to think instead, I'm not taking anything away from saving, but let's say for example, you said, how can I make $200 extra a month? What could I do? Mm. You see, the mindset is different. Instead of thinking in terms of limitations, you're thinking in terms of creatively unlimited potential. Mm. And that's the thing that people fear because they can't see it. They're only looking at what they have had instead of looking at what they could have. It's that could that becomes difficult. And that's exactly what you're talking about, Jane. Mm. You're saying, why is it that people are so hesitant to change? Mm. So may I also come back to the question because... I am curious about what do you think um, leads to your clients, right? That uh, uh, would uh, make them to come to you and maybe unconsciously or subconsciously aware to come to you for approval for their so-called shitty situation. What do you think could be the background? That's interesting. Mm. 
because I smile and I, I, I'm a good talker. In other words, what do I mean by that? Mm. In other words, I will listen. Mm. You see, many times people have their own hangups and, and so uh, hangups. And so we may not have time for someone else. I find, Jane, that over and above everything else, people just want someone to listen to them. And then when they get someone to listen, then they start to vent, right? That's that's natural as a human being. You start to talk about, most people start talking about their problems. I don't. I listen because I don't I don't talk about my problems because I don't see them as problems. But most people, once they find an ear, they're just they're just gonna let loose. Now, here's the difference. I will listen. And so I won't judge them. I will listen and they say, hey, here's a guy got a good smile and I've seen him on TV. And mm. so maybe I can just talk to him. And then they start inching even f closer. Okay. Well, we, we talked about how good the day was. <laughs> we talked about what we like to eat. Sneaky. Let me, <laughs> yeah. Right. Let, 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 let me talk about a little bit of a challenge that I have and see if he responds. Right. Mm, mm. They have this hang up. Okay. Um, my parents are really bugging the hell out of me. Right. And I don't <laughs> say anything. Hmm. Okay. He didn't say anything. Okay. Right. Let me try something else. My parents bugged the hell out of me and I want to kill them. Okay. We're just, we're just, we're just mess, messing around. Yes. Here, okay? acting, acting, yeah. okay? a different situation. Uh, but I don't judge them. Mm, I don't, mm. I don't, I don't, I'm not their judge. I'm not their jury. Mm. And they say, wow, he's really listening. And so that's what happens. However, here's the thing. Mm. Notice now, Jane, they're opening up, they're venting. Mm. Now, the moment they start asking a question, that's when it turns on my switch. So in other words, they say, you know what? I hate my parents and I want to kill them. What do you think about that, Bill? <laughs> that's my chance to go, well, have you ever thought about the fact that if you kill your parents, you're going to go to jail? Consequences. And in jail. Mm. Yes. Yes. And then they say, hmm, okay, I didn't think about that. So you see what's happening now, Jane. Now I am opening up possibilities and potentials whereby they were only worried about what their world was and how they wanted to vent. It's like they're so trying to focus on the problem at hand instead of coming up with a solution. And that's where you come in. But most people, but most people can't, Jane. We typically can't solve our own situation unless we have, like what you mentioned earlier, resources. What is a resource? It's not necessarily just money. It's about getting perspective. Agreed. How can someone else see what I can't see? It's like everyone knows how to drive a car, right? Mm. But why do we have those side mirrors? We could turn our head, right? But we don't because we may, you know, you know, rear in someone. So we use that side mirror. Many times people don't use that side mirror. That's what I am. Right. I'm a side mirror for people. Okay. I'm not giving them new information. I'm challenging them to look at based on what they just told me, what could be the outcome. You mm, see, mm. I New could, like, for example, for example, the parent killing situation. Yes. They say, well, Bill, <laughs> what, Bill, what do you think? I says, well, I think it's a great idea, but uh -huh. are you going to use a machine gun or you're going to use a machete? Right. Oh, no. So oh. it's a whole different thing. They go, God, that's a good point. Well, if I use a machine gun, right? <laughs> you see. And so now what I'm doing is I'm encouraging them and I'm keeping them in the behavior they came to me with versus looking at the potential outcomes. Mm. Talking about using a machete, talking about using a machine gun, it's advancing that thought. However, if I talk about, okay, even if you, if they say, I want to use a machine gun, I want to use a machete. Okay. And then they say, Bill, what do you think about murdering my parents? And I say, well, <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> you've accomplished it. So then what happens to you? Do you see? And so that's kind of like, what my coaching is about. Many times, Jane, they come to me because I'm an open person mm -hmm. and I want that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I invite people to come in because if I'm, if I'm looking like this all the time and mm -hmm. I'm, I don't talk much, mm -hmm. then they're going to, they're going to be, you know, evasive. They're going to stay away. They'll never come to me as a client. So I, I pull them in through my kindness, through my love. Mm. That's the only way I can get their trust. Mm. Once I have their trust, I have to listen to them. Right. Once I listen to them, I cannot judge them. And mm, so that's my course. formula. Mm. Draw them in, love them, mm. allow them to trust, mm. listen, okay. and then offer up that side mirror view. Side mirror view. Okay. So how often do you think your clients are receptive to when you are providing them the perspective uh, aka the side mirror as a metaphor that you have just used? How receptive are they? to look at those uh, side mirrors, you think? 
Well, that depends. It's a great question. That depends on whether or not they keep paying me for sessions. <laughs> if, if they keep paying me, that means they're pretty receptive, right? They, right. That means that they, they're learning something. Okay. But jokes aside, yep. um, that literally is what it is. That means that they show up next mm. time. Mm. That's how I know they're receptive because if they don't show up and they go, you know what? That was a great session, Bill. And thank you very much. I, I pretty much think that, okay, they're, they're not ready. Mm. They're not ready for the change. But if they show up again, um, then I know they're receptive. Now, here's my job, Jane. Mm -hmm. My job is to make sure that, and I don't want to get off into coaching here, but I'm just using this as an example because no I problem. know you just want to talk here. Mm. But what happens is then what I have to do is figure out why they're not making a change quicker. quicker. Why aren't they, you know, why, yes. Why are What's they repeating them? the mistake? Yes. What's either slowing them down, um, getting in their way, or stopping them? That's from behavior because they're so used to being where they were, mm. they're not accustomed to getting where they want to be. So it leads me to the next question, the what part. So what do you think was the most common? It's usually psychological, I we will assume, right? And I will assume, and um, maybe from your expertise as well. So what are usually those psychological barriers uh, does uh, people have, aka maybe uh, for uh, as exemplar A would be uh, maybe some of your clients. What is the most common psychological barriers that people or my me and you would have that is preventing us from uh, sticking to this change? Looking at the brand new side mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Good. Good point. Okay. Let's 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 elaborate a little bit on the on the side mirror and driving. Yes. Let's, let's say, for example, um, you know someone is coming up on your left side and you need to look in the side mirror, but, and this happens a lot, right? There's an accident in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's not you that got in the accident. You see the flashing lights. Yes. Okay. You see um, the turmoil. You see a car that's all mashed up or a motorcycle or whatnot. Yes. What do you, what, what do most people do? They focus on that. They look at that. Now, then what happens? The whole line of traffic slows down, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen this on an expressway, right? If you're in a taxi or if you're driving yourself. Yes. Because everyone wants to look. Yes. And then what they do is when they speed up again, that's the possibility for making an accident, right? Because then they start shifting away from the accident. They're yes. not looking at the side mirror, mm. okay? And so your question is, what is the one thing that people do basically whereby they keep repeating the same action over and over and over again, they're not yes. changing? because it's the outside focuses and it's those things. And this is society, Jane. That's the thing. In Singapore, for example, in the United States, in the UK, um, in China, it doesn't matter where you are. I believe, and this is just my opinion, I mm. believe that modernization, okay? Modern. Urbanization, mm -hmm. all of this lifestyle mm -hmm. gets in the way of getting in touch with who we are lifestyle it's and like trying a, to stick yeah. to the the pattern of how society works how society want so us fast. to work yeah but it moves so fast jane i mean you know you and i know it here on youtube on social media everything moves so fast you got to do this you got to do that the flow That's of traffic like accident. yes it's mm. like accidents happening right left and center and we lose our focus but we're not paying attention to the simple act that if we just make an adjustment mm we will be able to go safely into a lane. We get caught up in all this stuff. We get caught up in fashion. We get caught up in social media. We get caught up in um, um, cinema. We get caught up in, in all of these things, foods, all Trends. these things. Yes, exactly. That's part of it too. They get in the way. Now, don't get me wrong, Jane. Mm. Everyone needs to go ahead. This is life, right? You can't get away from it. True. But you, we have to know how much is too much. Mm. We have to know that, okay, this is as much as I need because after that, it just becomes overwhelming and I need to attend to my other things. So case in point, weight loss. Okay. Okay. So this is what, why don't people lose weight? Why mm -hmm. do they keep coming back to me? And they're going, Bill, you know, I need this and this and this. <laughs> it happens all the time, right? But here's the thing, Jane, mm -hmm. I give them everything that they need. Right. But the one thing that comes back most often is, gosh, they you know did what? not I, stick to the routine. Right. And why do you think oh they God. don't, Jane? Why well, do you think they don't? Uh, it's like what you just have explained, because it's hard to break away from a system that they all 
uh, people like myself and aka your clients, for example, has been sticking to all their lives. Yes. So to make this sudden change or a uh, uh, sudden change of routine, it's like you're ask you're literally cutting them off the uh, um, uh, life source that they feel like yes. it could be the uh, it could be the oxygen because maybe following the trend, uh, following this and that is like uh, oxygen to them. Without following yes. all these trends, they will feel like they've been suffocated. So yes. how do you how do you suggest? Now we have come to the how part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do you usually would uh, advise people in the uh, stuck in this kind of scenario? They are stuck to trends, stuck to habits, stuck to you know uh, uh, trends per se. Okay, aka or even uh, habits. How would you slowly implement? In, or incorporate like a program to your clients or me per se or, or anyone else that might be listening to us in secret you know what I mean so what can they do how how would you please good good question now there are okay there we have to make the distinction between two different things the how right now most people take that how and they try to do it themselves they do it through self-help books. They do it through social media and following um, influencers, right? So, for example, let's let's just use, um, let's say, for example, relationships. Let's take um, commerce and let's take health. So, especially influencers. So, what most people do on their own is they follow an influencer. They mm-hmm. follow what they're doing. So, that's what they're doing on their own. So, they're basically just basically a follow the leader. Some people grab self-help books, okay, which is actually, if they have a physical bookstore, which they don't really have that much anymore, it's the biggest section in most bookstores is the Mm. self-help section. So what does this say? This says that, first of all, the industry. You see, Jane, my industry, okay, Mm. meaning helping people, it Mm. makes money off of having other people ignorant and having other people fail. I know that sounds (laughs) weird, but it's important. It's so true, though. It's the only reason why some industries can make the money. Now, I consider myself a little bit different. I'll get to that in just a moment. For example, a book. You buy one book. It doesn't work for you. You buy this second edition. Doesn't work for you. You buy another book. Doesn't work for you. You try, you try a different kind of approach. You try a different kind of relationship. When you go at it yourself and it becomes um, a material object, Mm. And I consider social media also material because an influencer many times they will do stuff and they'll just say, hey, follow along. Because if an influencer is worth their weight in gold, which most of them are, they've got thousands, if not millions of followers, followers. How can you help all of them? How can you know what each and every one of them is challenged with? Mm. And so what they do is they give out cookie cutter solutions that's what books do right aka temporary solutions and they're usually maybe right. selling a product or services that they are uh, people uh, may assume that it's going to immediately solve their problems you're right you're right jane now here's where i have spent a lot of time trying to make myself different mm. when people come to me it's my responsibility to stay with them i'm not a book you don't shelf me. No, we keep going. And so that's the reason why whatever I do, I structure it in such a way that as you were asking little by little, it's little by little by little. Sometimes these things can take a long time. It depends on the person because everyone is unique. Mm. It's not a cookie cutter solution. Why do I say that? And why do I know that it doesn't work? Because I've been there. I've tried it all. I, in the very beginning, I was doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. And I found out it didn't work and it made me feel like shit. All right. I found that people weren't, weren't succeeding. I didn't like that feeling because I felt responsible. And so then what I started doing was spending more time. I held people accountable. Mm. I also supported people. Mm. I also kept them in the loop. So mm. for example, with social media, I use social media not to show people what to do, but to give them 24 seven access to me. Mm. Now, that means that they can, whenever they want to vent, and then all I got to do is just type in a couple of characters. Mm. What does that do, Bill? How can you just, you know, oblige everyone? You'd be surprised, Jane. Even just to respond with, hey, that's okay. We'll talk about it next time. You're doing fine. Just stick with it. That little nugget in and of itself is something that we don't see in the world today. People mm. don't take the time. Do you see what I mean? Yes. And so that's what I lend people. Support, motivation, accountability but you got to stay on it. And that's what I feel 
is the how. Now, when people come to me, Jane, you have to understand they're taking that first step, which is beautiful. They're actually reaching out and going, you know what? Hey, I need somebody. I need someone in flesh and blood mm. to do this. Mm. And then I go into action. Mm. That's my how. Now, another person may be different, but mm. that's my how. Did I answer your question? Yes, I think you have. Because if I were to put it into, let's say, a non-so-called uh, therapeutic sense, life coaching session, I do feel in each and everyone's individual personal life, it always feels so much better to have someone by our side, even it can be uh, via virtual world, like maybe you and me right now, you know, uh, uh, agreeing and, and in a way validating what each other is saying. Because uh, without each other, it's like, you know, sometimes it's just really hard. To, to do things on your own. And especially if you are uh, simply uh, thinking things to yourself. Um, when I mean by uh, thinking things to yourself means you are just constantly, okay, the only thing you're going to uh, talk to yourself is you're going to doubt my, uh, yourself saying, okay, can this work and can that work? So these are the things that I often find myself in when I'm all by myself, uh, literally. Yeah. But when I have someone to speak to, for example, yourself, or my uh, closest uh, friend that I often uh, speak to via Discord, uh, private messages, it feels so much more and so much better because there's someone over on the other side, someone tangible with a, a conscious mind on the same page as you, uh, knowing what you are doing every step of the way. Mm -hmm. It's so different. I think you um, have touched on a very important point that... Um, in order to make a change, please cut me off anytime that you want. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> yeah. So no, you're uh, rolling. Go for it. You're rolling. Yeah, thank Go you. Oh my gosh. Yes. So yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a show host here, by the way. Uh, so um, um, yes, it makes so much more difference because okay, like I said, when I am talking to you, right, I wouldn't be talking to myself in this manner, you know, because there is just another format that we are going to talk to ourselves when there's no one else around, which is always lends to, can I do this? Can I do that? Yeah, it's like, it's always self-doubt that leads to, okay, I'm going to go with the safest answer. I'll do, I will not do it. It always leads to the same, you know, most common, common safest uh, answer uh, if I were to talk to myself, having no one, which is to... Okay, you know what? I'll just uh, keep it simple. Let's not do it. Let's not take a risk. Yeah. So, what do you think about? Um, do you would you would you say um, besides your professional life coaching with your clients, would you also at the same time encourage people like your clients or myself or or yourself or uh, everybody else that you care about to have someone? beside them to so-called mediate or expedite this change or to overwatch this change? Yes and no. Yes and no. Okay, okay go um, ahead. The no being you have, okay, no if the person validates and encourages your negativity. Right. And that's where you got to be very careful because a lot of people feel comfortable in crowds are basically what I call mob mentality. Now mob we know mentality. that M O B, like the gangster yes, M -O -B. mob. Yes, correct. A mob of people, for example, a mob of people M O B, um, as in Malaysia, Osaka, Bangkok. Mm. Okay, um, a mob of people who, uh, for example, in the United, okay, since I'm an American in the United States, where they they ransacked the capital. That's mob. That's mm. mob, mentality. mob mentality. Some people feel comfortable being in that because what it does is it, it just it gets everyone churned up. Ah, right, you go Aggressive. crazy. Ah, right. Feeling powerful. But the same thing, but the same thing happens if you've noticed, if you sit down and talk with some elderly people or listen in. What does it, oh, I got an ache today. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, my liver hurts also. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've got gout in my foot. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, and they keep going, they keep going on. on, on. Everybody's just so validating what? each other's, each other's pain. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Focusing on the problem. Correct. Mm. So that, you still have people around you, but that's not good. That's mob mentality on mob a mentality. very sedate level. Okay. Of course, we don't talk about aggressive, but it happens both ways. Mm. You're nurturing 
the 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 negativity or the bad behavior not even with the elderly you're nurturing the illness right it's the same thing right all these <laughs> things as opposed to saying oh you got gout you know what i i saw this um this tcm doctor and he was fantastic you might want to go to him you see it's a different thing so in that sense no yes so that you can actually get someone to pretty much slap you upside the head and go you know what i hear what you're saying so what are you doing about it you're not right. doing anything about it you're just complaining about it. So mm. if you need my help, I'll help you as much as I can. If I can't help you, I may know someone who can. You, you want to make sure. You yes. want to make sure that uh, whoever uh, the the person that you're you're giving this uh, professional advice to, or even to someone that you, you care about, you want to make sure that someone who is overwatching this uh, change is someone is going to reinforce the positive but not the negative yes and the other the other part of that jane is not only are they going to be positive because there's 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 positive people that go oh man you know i, I know how you feel oh that's terrible oh yeah oh wow oh man i go <laughs> oh, i i empathize with you but they're not giving you any solutions right the, better off the person that goes oh you know what i empathize with you that's really bad what if you were to go to this particular doctor who I've heard from a friend of mine who does really well, or they say, you know what, I've never felt like that before, but I can, I can feel that you're hurting. Um, let me do some research. Let me see what I can find out for you. Okay. That's the person that you want, because then you don't have someone who says, yeah, I know. You know what? I, I got you. I know how you I know how you feel. What you do is you take some spiders, you crunch them up, put some ants in there with it, put a little bit of dirt, mix that up with some some rainwater, put a little bit of sludge in there, go ahead and drink it up, and you're good to go. Oh, I've no. heard that that solution works. Do you All see? Right. Okay. It's dangerous, right? Because mm -hmm. what they're doing is they're pretending to have the solution mm. instead of having the humility to say, I don't know mm. when they don't know. Right. So. That's all that a person who's seeking help needs to do. They need to, and what I do is I tell them, seek out someone who knows more than you. Doesn't have to be a lot more, but a little bit more. Mm. And if it makes sense, then you go with it. Mm. If it doesn't, ask them if they do know someone who knows a little bit more or knows a lot more. Do you see? Mm. Because as humans, we know, Jane, we know if someone, if, you know, if they're, if they're, you know, a witch doctor and they're talking about ants and spiders mm. and stuff like that, mm. unless of course you like eating ants and spiders. <laughs> then we, we I heard they are much pretty nutritious. <laughs> <laughs> In Thailand, they are, okay? Yeah. I still couldn't get into it yet. That's so delicious. So, go ahead. <laughs> so, so, so there you go. I think it's important to understand the two different people. The no and the yes to my, to my answer to you is, Knowing it, if they're just going to be there to support the same turmoil or misery that you're going through, um, the yes and finding someone who's actually going to be able to help you, if not themselves, be your inspiration and your solution to the next step. Mm. Bill, and also um, uh, about, we have come to the last two questions. Here comes uh, my next question, okay? Uh, coming to talk about the topic of finding someone that, are, that is a yes, 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 yes. That is going to help uh, mediate and expedite uh, someone who is willing to make a change. Do you think that uh, it's really absolutely necessary to have someone who is way more knowledgeable in life and experience, experience in life? Or can it just be anyone who has a very clear mind and very disciplined and knowing uh, what you are going through, is that enough? That's an interesting question. It's a good question. It depends, Jane. It depends on the situation. For example, if, um, take for example, you're traveling to a new country and someone has a, a situation. I know I'm not trying to be little. I know what you're saying, but mm. we have to use this example. No problem. Let's say, for example, that someone they, that a native of the location. Let's take Japan for example. You go to visit Japan, and you don't know where the the ramen shop that you saw in online that's really good. You don't know what what street that is, and so you ask a, a bystander, "Hey, can you help me? Do you know where this is?" And they go, "Oh yeah, yeah. You just walk down here. You turn left and you turn right." Mm -hmm. You see, they're actually helping you. They only have a little bit more knowledge than you, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay, that's the thing. Um, and that's okay. But let's say, for example, that you say, you know what? I want to go into outer space and I want to walk on the moon. There'll Can be someone help me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to need a physics professor. You're going to need um, an engineer. Elon Musk. <laughs> you're gonna need, right. You're going to need a lot. So it all depends on what your challenge is. In some instances, it's available. But this is the danger. What the cyberspace has done to us is it's made us think that everything that we need is right there. It's, but to me, it's sort of like what a physical library used to be, you know, where you have the card catalog and all of that. Oh, I miss but, all time libraries. Yeah, the physical right. library. Mm. And that's pretty much what cyberspace is, right? The information is there. And some, and we were led to believe that that's the only place that we need to go, which is why you have varying opinions all the time in cyberspace, right? Mm, different but opinions. here's the thing, when you go to a library, right? The physical library, who is the person who was always there to help you? The librarian. librarian. Yeah. I can't ever remember a time where there was not a physical form inside because we always get to the point of, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming. Can you help point me into an area? And so that's what the librarian would do. So the librarian knew a lot because she knew everything about the library. So what's my point? In order to find someone to help you in a coaching in instance, it all depends. So in other words, when people come to me, I'll let them know. And I think it's the coach's job to help them because most people don't know what they need, Jane. They don't know how much. They don't know what they need. They just know that they have a problem, but they don't know how big the problem is. They, to, to them, they stub their toe. That could be the end of the world for them, right? Until the coach goes, well, actually, you're not bleeding. It's only black and blue, so you're not going to bleed to death. It's not the end of the world, so just use this Band-Aid, right? Okay. Oh, that's, that's a great idea. You see, <laughs> this is the perspective we're looking at. So it's a coach's responsibility to be able to d dictate what the problem is. So what I do, that's the reason why whatever I do in the very beginning, I don't have anyone commission me for anything. In the very beginning, I actually give them the time so that we can find out if we're going to be a good fit. Mm -hmm. In other words, I sit there and I talk to them and I listen to them and I say, okay, and I'll, I'll pose questions. And then I can determine at the end of that time together, I will have to tell them one of two things. You know what? You do have a challenge, but here's how you can resolve it because it's, it's simple. The band-aid. Or two. You know what? You do have a challenge, and this is how we can solve it. We'll take step by step because it requires surgery. Your toe is missing. Whoa. I don't know if you knew that. You probably didn't realize it, but you severed your big toe because the nerves are cut off and you didn't feel it. You're Whoa. bleeding to death. Okay. <laughs> that is a so, great metaphor, by the way. Here's what we need to do mm -hmm. because it's numb, right? Yep. They didn't feel it. The nerves, the toe is not there anymore. It's not wiggling, but they're bleeding out. Mm. Many times people don't realize in their relationship, in their wellness, in their business, they don't realize they're bleeding to death. That's when I come in. Oof. I'm not there to put a Band-Aid on them for successive sessions. I will tell them if they only need a Band-Aid or if they need surgery. If they need surgery, if it's a challenge that I deal with, then we go to work. But as you know, a physical surgery can take hours. This could take days. This could take months until we get there. And so it's the coach's job to let the client know how severe or how simple their issue is. It is that in depth. So to say, so to speak, there is no uh, a definite answer to my question, which is, uh, would someone who has a clear vision and discipline enough is to sum up in a nutshell, probably may not be enough. Because uh, like you explained, the injury or what your, well, the, the, the person or aka, for example, A, your client, it really depends on how deep is their issue. So yes. you will guide them to the appropriate person for the absolute uh, so-called recovery that will lead to the solution. Yes. And Jane, just to add to that a little bit, and as I, as I kept repeating, many times we don't know. We don't know how severe it is. That's the reason why it's my industry's responsibility. And that's where we failed so miserably because we say, yeah, you've got a problem here. Just throw a book at it. Hey, you got a problem. Just follow my videos. Just follow my stream all the time. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't know who you are, but just go ahead and give a thumbs up. Oh my God. Thumbs up. 
You see, there's no way of dictating what the person is really going through, right? And so that's what I mean. Many times they don't know. It's our responsibility, as I say, to get dirty. Mm. It takes time. What I mean by getting dirty is we've got to ask the right questions. We've got to be there for people. We've got to listen to people. We've got to be honest. Otherwise, oh, that person is just going to go down some dark alley and they're going to get mugged by themselves, you see? And that's why the industry has to wake up. It's not the client, Jane. It's not, you know, external individuals, when they reach out and they say, you know what? Hey, I got a problem. Can somebody help me? And then all of a sudden, all the, you know, the, the witch doctors come out of the world, <laughs> right? Because everyone's in there to try oh, and make a profit. I dogs and monkeys. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, you know. I'm guilty, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those dogs and monkeys. Yeah, I do that a lot during <laughs> exactly. my live streams. I do that a lot. You made me realize something though, uh, Bill, if you don't mind me cutting you off a little bit. Please, go, go, go. My, uh, this is my confession to you uh, and to anyone who might be watching our uh, podcast uh, later on is I tend to be a smart ass. Yeah. Because I feel like, hey, this certain podcast works for me. It, it works beautifully. I'm like, whoa, I suddenly felt so enlightened by watching this particular podcast, you know. So I immediately assume by introducing this podcast to okay, these people, these people, people, please watch it, please watch it. But I never understood until today through you that everybody's uh, process and uh, uh, how deep their issue is, uh, it, it's different. So the podcast may not be viable to them at that point of time because they are not there to receive it yet because that is not their immediate obstacle, I must say. Would you say that? I feel I make a really huge um, donkey mistake. Yeah. <laughs> no, but Jane, but Jane, here, here, here's the difference between you and other podcasters, perhaps, okay? Because okay. I don't listen to other podcasters. Hmm. But I need critics, is... by the way, yeah, so please give me critics. I want to be better. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, but this is this is not a criticism. I this love criticism. Is, the, the, but, but here's the thing. This is a congratulations because, Jane, what you just said, you said that because podcasts are different and that maybe some people won't be able to get the answer from this podcast. Is that correct? Or something similar to that? Um, because like what you just explained is like we don't know what the person is going through. So Correct. this podcast may work for me, me even though I, we, we could uh, come to a surface uh, agreement between me and my viewer, per se, uh, during my live streams, gaming live streams. We may be in the same situation. So that's where I uh, told them, hey, look, we were in the same situation. We are in the same situation before. I'm going to introduce to you this uh, specific podcast. Please go watch it. But what I yes. didn't understand before you sharing this today was... Yes, the person may have a like a, let's say a uh, addiction addiction issue, addiction problem to maybe alcohol or gambling or drugs per se. I wouldn't know what exactly they are truly going through because everybody's environment, mentality, uh, how the way they are brought up is all different. Yes. So you taught me something, uh, Bill, today, which is uh, wow. I mean, like uh, you truly really need someone like yourself, or a professional, uh, 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 you know, a professional like yourself, to assess who is the best candidate to so-called expedite this uh, change for people who wants to change. Yes. In other words, Jane, you need a relationship. Think about this. Even in the dating world, okay? You have social apps whereby you can meet someone, do a one-night stand, and that'd be it. But would you take them home to meet your parents? No. Would you consider setting up a home <laughs> with them? Would you consider having children with them? The only time that happens, Jane, is after you spent time, after you've had a relationship with someone. That's no different than coaching. Now, we can do one night stands right, left and center. I can go ahead and give someone a cookie cutter weight loss program. I can give someone a cookie cutter, get your business and your first thousand dollars in one month uh, cookie cutter uh, solution relationship. Well, I can tell you AKA, how to find people in your term one night stands. Right. Exactly. One night stands or we can develop a relationship and then we can get down to it and we can truly get into understanding each other and hopefully resolving the situations that you're going through because I need to know about you. 
I need to know everything about you. I don't want to see you in some, you know, inebriated state, um, you know, drunken brawl in a bar <laughs> on a Friday night when everyone else is drunk and you're drinking. You don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what you're saying, but we don't care. We wham, bam, thank you. We're done. <laughs> and that's the next day, right? Yes. That's pretty much what the industry is doing. But if you think it's about saying, it, your metaphor is a great metaphor because what Nesson often, what it does to us is that temporary relief. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But that is not the way yeah. to have a long-lasting relationship. That's the problem. You mentioned it. Addictions. People have a problem. They get addicted on that behavior. They're never digging deeper. They're never establishing a relationship. And so one night stands all the time. And then they wake up one day and they go, gosh, you know what? I want to start a family. How come I can't find the right woman or the right guy? Duh. Right. Okay. Bill, uh, here comes my next question. If yeah. by any chance, if uh, anyone were to watch out this video, uh, aka podcast per se, how can people uh, reach you? Personally. They can, they can, if they want to go ahead and reach me, they can actually go into BillCalhoun.com because I have my website there and in there, what people have the opportunity to do is actually just to schedule a one-on-one -on -one short conversation chat with me, no obligations. Now I know that kind of gets tossed out there like, you know, a buzzword, but it, seriously, because I don't want to work with someone that I think, number one, that I can't actually help. Mm. Number two, that they're not having any fun, mm. you know, trying to discover themselves. And so they can do that and they can actually schedule um, a meeting with me. And so what we do is we get on the phone or we get on a Zoom call. We don't do it by texting. And, you know, I listen to them and even in that session, chances are they're going to learn something mm. and I'll definitely learn something about them. If the relationship goes further than the one night stand, great. Mm. If not, <laughs> at least they're going to be satisfied. I understand. So they, May I assume that you are actually, you act as an assessor to see if you have the uh, uh, tools uh, or the so-called tools that you require uh, for this one night stand or, or should I say a relationship? That is yes. going, if, if you have the tools, you will take on this client. But if you feel like yeah, if actually, you do not have the tool, you will refer your client to the appropriate channel of a uh, 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 channel where they have the proper tools to help your this uh, uh, first time assessment, assess clients. Am I right? Um, yes and no. Okay, first of all, what I do is I call it dating. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I use these words is so people can actually understand. So like, it's great, like by the way, yeah, earlier, I love we don't it. Want, we, yeah. we want to get away from the theory, the theory of it, because it can be quite confusing to people. Mm -hmm. So we're dating. We're not getting married. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marriage may come, but marriage, as we know, requires more responsibility, more, you know, more time. Yep. So dating is what we do is that yeah, we had a great time. Okay. That worked. I know I don't want to see anymore. I want to see someone else or I do want to see you. Let's work on the set. That's kind of like what I do. I date my clients online. Okay. Nothing um, illicit. That's about, great. Okay. So in other words, we get, they get to date me. I get to date them. We get to find out what each other are like and we see if there's something in it whereby we can develop a, a coaching relationship. Okay. Now, on the other hand, in terms of referrals, yes, I don't refer people. Now I know other coaches do Re coaches will say, you know what? I don't know what to do, but I can refer you. The reason why I don't do that Jim, mm. yep. is because I really don't know how other coaches practice what they do because I've never been a client of theirs. Do you see what I'm saying? So in yes. other words, if I was actually working through a year with someone or six months through someone as a mentor, I'd be the first person to go, you know what? I work through my challenges. You might want to go to the same person, right? Mm, but mm. I don't. Right. And so it'd be very easy for me to go by hearsay. But then if a, if, if a person that I'm dating um, goes and then they say, well, you know what? Bill referred me and that guy sucked or that woman sucked. Damn. Right? Then I'd feel responsible. Mm, so mm. no. What I will do though mm. is I, but, and that's the whole thing about listening. Mm. I'm not trying to give them something, Jane, mm -hmm. that I possess and they don't. Mm -hmm. That's what coaching is about. I'm there. Remember now, I'm the side view mirror. Mirror. That's the key objective here. I'm not a wizard. I'm not creating a situation whereby... Oh, I didn't know that. What I'm doing is I'm helping people understand themselves by virtue of listening to what they're telling me. I am their blind spot. Blind and spot. So, yeah. Professional and so blind by spot. nature, I blind spot need to spotter. Refer. Right. So I wouldn't need to really refer. 
unless of course, now, now the referral business usually comes with practical things. Let's say for example, that you're a doctor, but you're an orthopedic surgeon and someone comes to you for a gastrointestinal intestinal problem. Well, then that orthopedic surgeon would go, you know what? I only do bones and muscle. If you want to have something down with your stomach, you might want to go down the hall. Well, that's not the way with life coaching. Life coaching is about internal emotions and psychology. Typically, internal emotions. Yes. Typically, we don't refer out unless it's um, an addictive behavior. Let's say, for example, that it's, um, uh, let's say it's um, alcoholism. I don't do alcoholism. And I'll tell them that. I say, look, I don't do alcoholism. We can talk about other things, but I don't know a coach that is best in alcoholism. Please do the research because every coach is different. Mm. It may be different. Do the research, get on a call with them, with ones that resonate with you, that you feel comfortable and do the same thing. That's the reason why, Jane, I always give people a free date. You mm, see, that's the yes. thing so that people can try it and they can go from one coach to another coach, to another coach, to another coach. Right. Mm. And so that's the thing. That's sort of like my referral. My referral is based on the fact that, look, if you don't like me, great, go ahead and try others and then come back to me if you want to marry me. Okay. If you want to <laughs> date, we can, keep, we can keep doing that too. They'll but be very lucky. So, yeah. <laughs> so Bill, um, Actually, we have come to uh, almost an hour of our recording. So uh, is there anything else that you like to add to today's uh, topic of uh, the power of change and why people are often so afraid of resistance to change? There's one thing, Jane. There's one thing that I always tell my clients and I tell them over and over and over again because many times they forget. Mm. I tell them to take a coin and flip it. Okay. A coin has two sides. Yes. That's what change is. There's one side of the coin that is not change and it's perpetuation. That means that you're stuck. If you flip the coin, all you have to do is flip the coin and that's change because that's another possibility. That's what I try to explain to people. That is the simple secret of change. It's just to explore possibilities. Nothing wrong with failing. As for possibilities. Fail. Yeah. You fail towards success. That's what change is Fail all about. Fail towards success is beautiful statement. Yeah, towards success. And also uh, in a Chinese saying, uh, failure is the mother of success as well. Yeah. There you go. Translated you to go. English. Yeah, Bill, yeah. today has been such a great first recording of the My Body and Soul show. You have no idea. Yeah. So next week, we're going to be talking about uh, on the topic of insecurities. Okay, so we'll uh, catch you on the next one, Bill. Yeah, thank you Got so it, much. Jane. Yeah, thank Looking you so much to for today's uh, recording. You're amazing, Bill. I'll see you on the next one. So are you, Jane. You're absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, see you, Bill. Bye.